With equipment breakdown coverage from American Family Insurance, you can protect all the things that keep your dream home running from sudden mechanical or electrical issues. Because this sound shouldn't mean... Contact your local agent or visit AmFam.com to learn more. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Refer to policy for equipment breakdown covered losses, deductible limitations, and exclusions. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Products not available in every state. Welcome back to HyperFocus, where we are neither hyper nor focused today. Let's do it. (laughs) At least I'm not. Hello to all the people who should be studying for their finals right now, but instead are procrastinating with this podcast. Welcome to HyperFocus. That's that's funny because it also applies to me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Same. We're doing good. This podcast (laughs) is absolutely like my procrastination route. Oh, yeah. uh, I I don't want to, I don't want to study. I have to work on the podcast. Sorry, (laughs) professors. Well, they can get over it. They're mostly they're not hosting a they're, podcast. They're like half of half of them are business professors. What we are they going to do? We have both had one professor who I know has <laughs> not let a me podcast. run my business. What? That would be very awkward. We said we both had one professor who we know has run a podcast, but other than that, they're not running a podcast. They can't judge. I'm sorry. I just thought I heard a siren. I heard a siren. Okay, you're not crazy. I was distracted. Yeah, you're good. I'm neither hyper nor focused. Um, this episode's going to be plenty chaotic. Oh, so good. It's good. Good. Um, so. Without further ado, because Rachel's neither hyper nor focused, nor, for, nor, nor, nor focused, no. <laughs> hasn't got into some kind of a rant yet. I'm going to go ahead yet. and get into apologies. Mm. So for the last episode, first of all, I want to apologize to anyone who's heavily and thoroughly convinced that they have seen cannibalistic feral people on the Appalachian Trail. Who I Rachel didn't just, say they didn't exist. Who Rachel just doesn't believe. That's not what I said. Um, I also want to apologize for the sheer number of trigger warnings that Rachel used in her last episode. Would you have preferred that I didn't no, give trigger no, warnings? No, no, just the fact that they were all necessary. I just want to issue an apology for that. Um, okay. And finally, I think the most important, most crucial, and most offensive thing that happened in the last episode, um, I want to apologize for the fact that Rachel had to think for a moment before realizing that Tarzan and the Jungle Book are not the same movie. <laughs> So there you I'll go. Accept that. <laughs> hey, I'm not hyper. Well, uh, I, I, will, I will retract that. I'm not <laughs> focused most days. <laughs> All right. Well, as my final apology, um, I wanted to apologize on my own behalf. Yeah. For I, I can't because imagine which one this is going to be. There's so many things you could say. <laughs> well, I was going to apologize on my own behalf because I'm going to be leaving the podcast soon. She is. She's abandoning me. Yeah. This has been a really cool experience. I'm really grateful for all that I have learned on this pod. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was the worst time. <laughs> I'm really grateful for all that I've learned on this podcast. I've gotten to work with Rachel. Um, it's been fun to get to learn this. I'm getting married very soon. We're going to be living in kind of different areas. Um, and it just made Kind me- of. I'm going halfway across the world. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. For a little while. Um, but... Anyway, it just made most sense for me to move on to this podcast. You'll get to keep Rachel. We all know you prefer her anyway, Mm -hmm. so (laughs) it'll be fine. Thank you. That was a very Um, good parting She'll find someone else to sing her praises in this chair. Listen, so uh, if you have a topic idea Mm -hmm. or you think you can do this better than Lauren, send us an email. (laughs) Yes, please do. Um, We won't be accepting. You want to replace her. Let's see. Uh, (laughs) We will be accepting resumes, the only uh, content that we want on your (gasps) resume. The only content that we want on your resume are the random things you have studied. We want you to include the dates. We want you to include where you studied, what sites you studied it on. No actual work experience. I just had a really good idea. (laughs) Either we do something like that where people have to make like really specifically weird resumes Mm -hmm. or we do one of those like Google Forms things and put it on TikTok (laughs) and see what happens. That would be awesome. That would be really good. Yeah. But anyway, so you are you do still have me for a couple more weeks, um, but I will be leaving shortly. So we wanted to give you a heads up so that you could either count grieve. down the days or <laughs> grieve. I said something nice. Oh, thank you. I said that people would grieve. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. All right. Well, it's uh, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been real. But she has decided that a man is more important than me. <laughs> Once again, I wish we had access. To the clip from New Girl. Please hold while I turn down my mic. A white man? No! Um, my whole building just heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny 
funny if somebody who lives in our building heard this podcast and was like, oh, <laughs> that's what that was. The sacrifices I make, we make for this podcast. Uh, Anyways, ladies just, and gentlemen. Just completely throwing all caution to the wind when it comes to what people think about us. Uh, probably our upstairs neighbors yeah. hear us. Maybe yeah. our downstairs neighbors. I don't know. Could be. Um, but anyways. <laughs> Lauren's leaving. <laughs> Yep, I am leaving. And I turned it into this somehow, and my ankle just cracked really loudly. Happy finals week. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. So, um, would you like to talk about soda instead? Wait, I'm not done talking You're about done. you. Oh, okay. Believe it or not, oh. I'm going to take a moment to not talk about myself, but to talk about you. Aw. Yeah, it, that's that's big. Yeah. Um, send us on all of our social medias our email, whatever. Send us your favorite Lauren moments from the podcast. I would like to, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, Mm -hmm. but I feel like there's something good there. um, And I want to do something with it. So tell us what they were or send us clips, whatever. I'm terrified and also very curious Mm -hmm. now. So you need to do that. Do it. And also it doesn't even all need to be from the podcast. Send us, you know, clips from uh, TikToks and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Anything weird, interesting or stupid Lauren has done, Please send them our way. And Most things I do qualify as either I, weird, interesting, or stupid. I, I will intercept all of them before she sees them, so don't even worry about it. All right. Are we going to do this or what? All right. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Um, all right. So do you want to talk about soda instead of finals? Um, I have a confession. Go ahead. I don't really like soda. Yeah, I don't either. That's not the point. <laughs> okay. Um, you actually might like it less after this episode. Ooh. So that's Is good. this about Mountain Dew? No. Okay. All right. This isn't about how you can dissolve a rat in mountain dew no okay. although that would be a fun one um i feel like that's some rhett and link content that takes like us, a whole probably. it takes like a whole month people are like you can dissolve it in mountain dew you can literally dissolve living things in like any liquid in a certain amount of time like come on uh, but it is probably faster in mountain dew anyway i'm taking over this all uh, right topic what is, so go continue so so it's 1990s <laughs> coca-cola has taken over the market Yes. Pepsi was not happy about it. Mm-mm. What else is new? Literally nothing. Literally you just described most examples in business textbooks. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that's actually one thing I was going to say. Rachel is a business major, so I'm leaning <gasps> Is this in. about Russia? No. Oh. I am. There have been a lot of Pepsi-related scandals. I feel like we could do an entire month of episodes on Pepsi. Um, this one was one that I found very interesting, um, so I wanted to talk about. I will say there is some stuff here from business marketing perspective that'll be very interesting to oh, hear okay interested to hear rachel's analysis on at the end lauren or did, throughout the episode lauren did a business project <laughs> well <laughs> yeah that sentence let, let me say this um this scenario sucked about as much as if i did a business project <laughs> So um, Coca-Cola and Pepsi fought it out in several different ways, including espionage and other things like that. Mm. Um, Pepsi was once caught cooking the books that it looked like they had better sales than Coke and Coke had better prices, so they outsold Pepsi. Um, Within the middle of this, Pedro Vergara, who worked for the company in New York, came up with an idea that he thought was going to save the company. Pepsi started a brand new campaign called Wait, Number <gasps> Fever. I know what this is. Yes. I do know what this is. Good. Yes, I do know what I this is. I was kind of hoping you would because yep. it's fun. It's uh, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. So it caught on like crazy in the Philippines and yeah. sales jumped from $10 million to $14 million and the market share um, up to 26%. I will say um, for those numbers, they were slightly different from different sources, but they were all very, very similar to one another um, in every what, source. What, the market share percentage? Yeah, that's fine. They came across a little bit differently. So basically the way that it worked, so Pepsi was obviously selling their soda, hopefully, and on the tops of the bottle caps, right under... um, Under, on the bottom of the bottle caps. On the bottom of the bottle caps. The part that's inside the bottle. Yeah. On the bottle caps, when you opened it up, there was a (laughs) three-digit number on there. Um, And every night on Channel 2, um, a winning number would be announced. So for this, most often the prize was equivalent to about $5 nowadays in pesos, which would be about 100 pesos. Um, But they had made a total of 18 millionaires. The Philippines uses pesos? Yes. Huh. Or they did in 1992. Um, So. Should have known that. Pepsi had made 18 millionaires. Um, at this point, the promotion promised people in the Philistine. Philip, wow, I said the Philistines. Wait, they they 
made All right, 18 million. So this promotion They were giving away five dollars, you said. Hold on, let me rephrase off that. So this promotion promised people that they could be millionaires if they won. So a million pesos would be now equivalent to about thirty-seven to forty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money to win from buying a soda that you probably would have bought anyway. So although most of the prizes were around 100 pesos, so $5, which would be equivalent to $5 okay, now. Okay, so it was like a grand prize. Yes, exactly. Um, but 18 people had actually won that grand prize and become millionaires. Um, one of these millionaires was named Nima Balms, who was then called Mrs. Pepsi because she claimed that co- the cola put her husband in the I'm sorry, I had mood. to look it up. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Interesting. I had to look it up. The Philippine peso is not... Uh... Like the Mexican peso, ah. it's a the Philip the Filipino word is peso. Oh, okay. Which I might be saying wrong, but in English we say peso. Yes. Okay. All right. I had I was confused. I was like, "There's no way so, I would have known that." <laughs> Go back and say that thing that you started talking that I started talking over. Okay, that was so important. One of these millionaires was named <laughs> Nima Balms, oh um, who was then called Mrs. Pepsi because she claimed that this cola put her husband in the mood. Great. Yep. So there you go. Um, she I became... don't know what to do with that. Well, there you go. I feel like there are a lot of jokes there. And I just, there are so many thoughts in my head regarding those jokes that I can't pin down any single one. So please continue. Okay. So at this point in time, there was widespread poverty throughout the Philippines. So this amount of money would be life changing for a lot of people. So this became a really widespread phenomenon. People got really excited about it. Everybody was watching the news. Um So people became very hopeful of actually becoming millionaires just from buying their soda. So one maid went to jail because she was accused of selling, of stealing her employer's winning bottle cap. And two Pepsi salespeople were murdered following a dispute Mm -hmm. over a different bottle cap. I I knew about the murder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, one family, the Sos, were poor and they waited anxiously to see if they could win, collecting bottle caps and watching the news every night. And they were just hoping to be able to turn their lives around with this promotion. At 6 p.m. on May 25th, 1992, Pepsi announced a winning number, 349. And yes, they did. The Sos had the matching bottle cap and they danced and laughed. As a matter of fact, hundreds of thousands of people danced and laughed that night. Six to eight hundred thousand bottle caps were produced with the winning number on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, obviously, Pepsi had a little problem. Um, Basically, what had happened with this is the number 349 had been printed in circulation because it had been marked as a non-winning number uh, before this. And so... The promotion was supposed to end on May 5th, but when it was extended, 349 got added to the list of winning numbers. This mm-hmm. was a massive oversight on Pepsi's part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they added the, a seven-digit code to the number that um, people did not know about. So they basically said the only two legitimate ones are the ones with this code. Pepsi did not know how to handle this at first. Um, so the first thing that they did is the next morning they had – them announced on the news that 134 was the real winning number um and then 349 was not which made people very confused and very angry um so there were 486,170 people who came to claim their winning crown so they all wanted to win they'd all won a million dollars they wanted to claim it so um pepsi offered everyone 500 pesos which came out to 18 ish dollars mm-hmm. That did not satisfy most people. Um, of one, of, not. one of the quote unquote winners was Victoria Angelo, who proclaimed to her family, quote, we are we are a millionaire and said of the day, quote, I tell my children you can finish school and go to college. I tell my husband he can buy a passenger Jeep. I tell myself we can buy a real house. Can you imagine? It's a dream come true, unquote. So this oversight was not just like a mistake Pepsi made. Like this really impacted people because they thought they had just had their whole lives changed and then pepsi was finally like you know what here's- yeah this thing was a pr nightmare yeah they were finally like you know what here's 18 bucks yeah you'll be fine so while people you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> so- it just took a second to register <laughs> <laughs> while people stood outside the factory security guards were seen by one guy throwing soda bottles at the crowd and charging at people with riot shields that was one person said that that was happening from the security guards um pepsi trucks were carrying automatic weapons and protesters threw stones at a pepsi manager Mm -hmm. that's just some of the initial chaos this is not the kind of chaos that we advocated for on this podcast however it is the kind of chaos we like to tell you about um yeah (laughs) so 
this had very quickly become a very huge problem for Pepsi. Um, so one person, Del Fierro, who's very important in this story, he started Coalition 349, um, which, interesting, you could say, coincidentally, um, Coke's local CEO gave him 10,000 pesos as startup money for his um, coalition. Purely, purely coincidence. Absolute coincidence. They're probably just friends. Um, <laughs> started helping him out in his little business venture. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready to meet the moment? Ozzy and our friends at Chevrolet are proud to present Real Talk, Real Change to help foster racial equality in America. And we're inviting you to help. Join me, Carlos Watson, as I talk with key leaders from across the country about racial disparities in America's healthcare system. Look for The Carlos Watson Show and Real Talk, Real Change on YouTube and subscribe. Or download The Carlos Watson Show wherever you get your podcasts. Um, it's just some startup money. Oh, yeah. So Coalition 349 held rallies outside of Pepsi plants, and Del Fierro prepared a lawsuit, hoping to make it to into a class action lawsuit. Mm-hmm. So several other groups, such as United 349 and Solid 349, charged up, or came together, but they charged fees for membership um, that were probably more than fair. The Sos, who's the family that we talked about in the beginning— um, they signed up with a guy who was a preacher who said that God had called him to fight Pepsi. So I'm there sorry. was just a lot of different um, chaos going on about this incident. There was a lot of anger. Um, people began buying off 349 bottle caps just in case Pepsi yeah. did end up offering yeah. a big payout in the future. Mm-hmm. So 10,000 claimants actually filed suit against Pepsi within the next How many? few months. 10,000. Okay. Um, Molotov cocktails were thrown into Pepsi factories and delivery trucks. Executives had to travel with bodyguards, and many employees were moved out of the country. If a word of advice, yeah. Um, if you want money from a company, I don't recommend destroying their assets. Uh, might it be effective? Maybe, but it also might make them unable to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Um, but executives were also receiving death threats. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So this was a very dangerous situation for Pepsi employees because they had made a very stupid mistake. Yes. Um, People were very angry because they thought their lives would change and they had been lied to um, because Pepsi, they felt that Pepsi did not fall through on their promises, especially when Pepsi came forward and was like, oh, no, we have the security card. The security codes, only those two are valid, but they had never included that as part of the promotion. Also, when they changed the number the next morning. It was just some really shady stuff that they tried to do at first that made it very, very understandable why people would be so angry. So January of 1993, Pepsi had to pay a 150,000 peso fine to the Department of Trade and Industry for deviating from the promotional campaign that the government had approved. I'm sorry. Say again. They they had to – I was putting in my order for dinner. (laughs) They, They had to pay it to who? Um, to whom? The Department of Trade and Industry, because they had gotten approved for this promotion by the government. Okay. The government was like, you deviated from what you said you would do. And so they uh, had to pay yeah, that fine. Uh, so Del Fierro was able to sign up 800 total claimants. He's the one who was trying to put together the class action lawsuit. Um, so he looked to bring the fight to New York himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he, in February... Oh, and then also, like, moving chronologically. So this is this incident happened May 25th of 1992. It was January 1993 that they paid the fine. Um, and then in February, a homemade bomb was thrown at a Pepsi delivery truck. Yeah. Um, and it killed a school teacher and a five-year-old standing nearby, and it injured another five people. So this ended up becoming... Not good. No, not good. These riots became very, very deadly and lasted for a lot of months. Um, The next month, a grenade was thrown into a Pepsi plant and it killed three employees. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the situation had gotten very out of hand. I want to know who this... The one thing that I've been thinking about is I want to know who the, like, singular person was who made this mistake happen. And I want to know what happened to them. I mean, yes, it probably had to go through approval of a couple people, but... Someone is probably responsible for that mistake. Yeah. Um, I want to know. I want to know who it, who it was, and I want to know what happened to them. But yeah, a lot of other countries say that uh, that's one thing that they don't like about American businesses is that it's very hard to pin down. <laughs> <laughs> Our roommate is tiptoeing through the kitchen, trying not to make noise. 
Goodbye. Unsuccessfully, she just spoke. <laughs> the door creaks open. She looks at me, waiting. Whatever. <laughs> well, apparently, whatever. What I was saying was something that doesn't really matter. I don't really know how to contribute to this without just like spewing business stuff at you. And I don't think that our <laughs> listeners are going to find that interesting. So uh, I'll just right. sit here and drink my water. So Del Fierro's lawsuit finally came to New York in late July. So a full year later, um, he brought up a Philippine. I almost said Philistine again. you got to stop that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, he brought up a Filipino Senate report that claimed that the company was guilty of, quote, gross negligence and, quote, misleading or deceptive advertising, unquote. Of course, Pepsi contested this because it was the Filipino Senate. So Del Fierro sought $400 million in actual damages and $1 in moral and exemplary damages. That can't be right. Must be $1 million in moral and exemplary, not $1. Sometimes that happens. Regardless, Del Fierro fought it, but he did not succeed at that point in New York. Um, Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Yeah. There's nothing you can't do. Uh, Some people claimed that Pepsi had hired people to bomb their own trucks um, as a publicity stunt, and People's Journal had an article titled, quote, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time a business had done something like that. No, it would not. And Pepsi had done some very shady things in the past. Yeah. So, um, People's Journal had an article titled, quote, Pepsi goons bombed own trucks. I love that. Sounds right. I thought that was great. Um, February of 1994, the company actually lost a 349 court case. Um, and in July, 50,000 cap holders had organized, passionately fighting for the prize they had won. Moving forward to November, hundreds of 349 winners wielded torches n- near Manila's palace, which is where President Bill Clinton was staying. Mm. So they were asking for help from America. Their lawsuit was over in New York. It still was there at this point. Um, they wanted Bill Clinton to help. That was not successful. They soon heard back from New York because New York court dismissed the lawsuit because um, they said it needed to be heard in the Philippines. Yeah. Every time I hear about this, I just like don't even know what to... <laughs> what to like say yeah. or do i it's it's surprising to me sometimes that pep that pepsi uh survived after this yeah yeah because it's like it was just so stupid <laughs> so after this pepsi fell far behind coke sales in philippines of course yeah and it wasn't until 2006 that the filipino court actually Um, had a ruling on it, and they ruled that Pepsi hadn't been negligent and wasn't liable for damages, which is interesting. There was one article where Pepsi was asked to comment on the events in the story. Um, It was a more recent article. And Pepsi said it would be unable to verify them. Quote, these events took place almost 30 years ago, and none of the executives familiar with this program are at PepsiCo anymore. And given that the Philippines is just emerging from one of the world's longest COVID lockdowns, we have been unable to access stored records on this matter. And they also said, we deeply regret any pain and suffering our mistakes caused the people of the Philistines. Okay. Unquote. The Philistines? You did it again. I did it again. The people of the Philippines. Unquote. Until until that last sentence, I was like, boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also that last sentence feels like something that they just kind of threw in there. It does. But it's also like, uh, it's, it's tricky legally. Like, yeah. it's really easy to say that businesses are like doing really stupid things when but they say things tough like that. Legally, yeah. But it is tough legally. Like, they have to be really careful about what they say, mm-hmm. which is like stupid because then you can't actually apologize for things a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, they definitely knew what happened. Yes. Like, yeah, the people who were a part of it aren't there anymore, but uh they know what happened. The whole first part of that was um less than less than uh less than fully truthful. Yes. Which is kind of in line with everything that happened before <laughs> in the story. Like I feel like, you know, we go all the way back to yeah. there, you know. In the beginning we're like, No, 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 it was one thirty four. No, 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 you had to have a security code. No, 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 you can have eighteen bucks, like I feel like or five hundred pesos. Like I feel like it's very consistently a theme for them. Uh yeah. So the So family, who I mentioned very early on, uh, Marilee So, who's now in her early 50s, she runs a store in Manila. Her husband died um, a couple of years after this incident, uh, but she still will not sell Pepsi in her store. Understandable. Yes, very understandable. So that's what I have on this story. Um, I think I've, I've told you all of my opinions now. Yeah, uh, I think you have. Don't do this. No, uh, don't do hey, this. Hey, business owners, 
from from one business owner to another. Don't do this. No. <laughs> So basically what you can do um, when you're learning how to run a business, tell me if I'm right, Rachel, (laughs) research, if you're learning like conflict management, how to deal with PR situations, look at what Pepsi did and Uh, do the opposite. opposite. Yeah. Yep. And I think that- I mean, that pretty much sums it up. You'll be okay. I just basically uh, taught you everything you need to know. Like you you guys don't even need a business degree anymore. (laughs) All I had to do was agree with Lauren. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, it was all, it's all bad. Um, that about sums it up. It's all bad. A, don't be like Pepsi. B, don't be like Pepsi. C, don't be like Pepsi's in the, Pepsi's. C, don't be like Pepsi in the 90s in the Philippines. It's just going to be more harmful to you. Or someone may throw a grenade into your factory. Which, I mean, way overreaction, (laughs) but also. And just like the absolute lack of logic behind that, like. Yes, it's an overreaction and you shouldn't be violent at all, but what do you, what do you think you're going to do by bombing factory workers? Like literally probably minimum wage workers. Where do you think that's going to get you? Hmm? <laughs> I don't like I there's not a single good reaction in here yeah. except for the guy who like started a class action lawsuit. Which yeah, good which job. is great. He did right. awesome. And, and the think, woman who stopped selling Pepsi. That yeah, was good. There were, I think, a lot of people who did respond kind of similarly yeah. to that yeah. or supported people but, like but that. But it doesn't really get reported say, as like, much. Yep. The violence, I think, especially in this, like there were of course it's really sad that anyone died. It's really sad that anyone was injured. Right. But those also were very isolated cases that didn't seem to me like that was the majority of the protests. Well, it doesn't seem like they were super isolated because they yeah. happened multiple times. <laughs> That's true. Stories. That's very true. But, but what most, I'm saying is But I'm, there were like hundreds of thousands yeah. of people who got 349s and yes. didn't do that. And they didn't do that. And they had a very legitimate reason to be upset also. So both things are true. Yes. Um, so that's, al- that's always what I say in those situations. Like when, when people try to blame a, uh, a large group of people mm-hmm. for violence, when it's a couple peop- people in a group being violent, violent people will find reasons to be violent. It's usually not that the whole movement is bad. Or a whole group of people is bad. Mm. It's usually just the the only group that's bad is usually the violent people. Yep. Uh, I don't know where else to go with this because the whole thing is just like so awful. The whole thing is just so chaotic yeah. in such a negative way. In a horrible way. Yeah. Uh, when we say hyperfocus, a podcast for chaotic minds, that does not include <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pepsi executives in the philippines in the 90s yeah but you know i don't think any of them were listening anyway if they were you should just lock off now we don't need your lessons <laughs> we kind of do or maybe just listen and learn and be better and just hush and listen get better soon yeah yeah get better soon not in sickness just be better yeah like you know what i mean mm-hmm. i do know what you mean I, well, imagine getting a getting that and then not get and get, get then getting 18 dollars that would suck. There was a time. <laughs> my mom's not going to be happy about this. There is a time that, um, you know how McDonald's does like McDonald's Monopoly? No. Okay. Well, they do. It's like a promo they do. And you basically okay. get like little, uh, like on drinks and food and stuff, there's little like peel off tabs and you can like collect okay. like the Monopoly spaces and get gotcha. free stuff. Okay. And there was like a time when my mom thought that uh, like she had like one million dollars. <laughs> Because she thought she had, like, the right combination of stuff, and she got home, and my brothers were like, this isn't right. (laughs) And why didn't you bring us McDonald's? (laughs) Aw. We laugh. We laugh about that. That's very funny. We roast my mother. Hi, Mom. I don't don't know what to do here, bro. It's, like, I'm either going to give you a business lecture or... I know what they could do here. They could go follow us on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I never actually ordered my dinner, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, I will not be buying any Pepsi products. Good. Oh, that's what they have. They have Pepsi products. No. It's okay. I don't like soda. Anyway, as I said, nice bookend. Let's finish. Let's all finish right, the, all right. the, the cast, the pod. What? What are you looking at me for? You can follow us on Instagram. <laughs> at- <laughs> Does that what I sound like to you? You can follow us on Instagram. Okay. No, you do not. All right. Like you can follow us on Instagram <laughs> at Hyperfocus Pod. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter. Hyperfocus underscore pod. Why'd you stop doing the voice? Because I, I was tired of it. Okay. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok and never have to hear that voice again at Hyperfocus Pod. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Hyperfocus colon, a podcast for chaotic minds. Yes. We have both a page and a group. Um, you can come rant about Pepsi um, in the group and you can yes, see you can. us rant about Pepsi on the page. Yes, you can. Uh, you can send us an email. 
That'd be hyperfocuscast at gmail.com. If you think that you can do Lauren's job better than her, send us an email. Do we have any listeners in the Philippines? I feel like we do. I don't know. Hey, guys. What's up? Uh, we love ya. I would like to hear y'all's opinion on this. Oh, yeah, please. <clears throat> please send us an email with that i'm dying or stitch our tiktok when it comes out this week i'm so tired we love ya stay chaotic and stay tired hey uh how long is this gonna take i'm ordering food (laughs) Uh. (laughs) um Another 15 minutes, 20 minutes. (laughs) It's important. Are you ready to meet the moment? Ozzy and our friends at Chevrolet are proud to present Real Talk, Real Change to help foster racial equality in America. And we're inviting you to help. Join me, Carlos Watson, as I talk with key leaders from across the country about racial disparities in America's healthcare system. Look for The Carlos Watson Show and Real Talk, Real Change on YouTube and subscribe. Or download The Carlos Watson Show wherever you get your podcasts.